following our schedule, I would like to invite uh, engineer Luiz Alberto. Okay, he has a diploma from Cefet in Minas Gerais, and now it's UFMG. Okay, and he has experience in mineral processing, statistics for the optimization of processes, analyzing different scenarios reducing uh, the overhead. He is an uh, analyst at the ASEPM and he works with the optimization of projects, uh, diversified projects, and he's part of the graduate program in Cefet Minas Gerais. And he is uh, developing new reagents to promote uh, flotation. He was part of Minas Gemas, the company, and also uh, environmental and mineral permits. And he also has wells. Okay, uh, good morning, Mr. Luis, and the floor is yours. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. If you don't know c to senai I am an analyst there jointly with Christopher, and he's going to present some papers. CITI is a research center and innovation located in the city of Belo Horizonte, the capital of Minas Gerais. We have several institutes there, and I'm part of the Mineral Processing and Innovation Se Center. The paper I'm going to present now is part of a research project that we are developing there with a mining company. And the, the paper is called Assessment of the Characteristics of a Flotation, uh, flotation uh, uh, Tails, tails and for the Thermically Treated Flotation. Uh, so it has acidic characteristics. And so the use of acidity correctors, it's used to increase the pH and to increase the levels of calcium and magnesium present in the soil and to reduce the amount of aluminum uh, uh, exchange. And the uh, according to the definition, uh, so the acidity correctors, they promote the correction of the acidity in the soil and they supply calcium, magnesium or both. Also, the most uh, well-known uh, correct in Brazil is the calcitic calcarium or the magnesium calcarium. And it is related to the change of uh, calcarium uh, rocks in Brazil. But we have to consider an interesting aspect, which is the freight, the freight, because this can make the product unfeasible because sometimes the freight becomes more expensive than a ton of lime, a ton of lime. And so new sources, they have been studied so that we can diminish the dependency on these uh, lime rocks. And I have some studies here that have been discussing the use of uh, uh, metallurgy tails okay or waste but when we analyze the flotation waste they are discussed less in the literature and when it comes to the legislation that we have in force regarding the acidity correctors we have a normative instructor uh, instruction number 27 is going to discuss uh, the maximum limits of uh, heavy metals allowed and normative instruction number 35 is going to talk about uh, the specifications guarantees tolerance levels registration uh, packaging and labeling and so the materials and the methods so we have the flotation of tails it came from a mining com company from the city of Vazante in Minas Gerais and so it went through a thermal treatment so that we, ca we could diminish the plumbum uh, levels, the lead. And we followed the analytic methodologies for uh, fertilizers and correctors. And so we did a physical analysis. So we analyzed everything uh, dry. Okay, we had 0 0.84 millimeters, 0 0.30 millimeters. And we also did a chemical analysis of these materials and both methodologies they can be found in chapter 5 and the chemical characterization was to analyze the neutralization power of the corrector the presence of uh, calcium oxide and magnesium oxide and when it comes to the corrector we have the cadmium and the lead we have the granule granular uh, distribution so we have the passing percentage the 
and the right column is the passing percentage of the RFTT. So every time we do the comparison, we notice that the tails, they are going to meet all of the physical criteria demanded by a normative instruction number 35 when it comes to the use of acidic characters. And so this is a chart that shows three parameters that are very important for the acidity characters. The first part is the neutralization power, the first one in the middle, the CAO and and the MGO, the parameters uh, re required by the normative, and then we have the total neutralization on the right. Or, uh, we have the RFTT is the first column in green, which is the, the tails treated thermically, and the other uh, ones are the types of acidity characters that we have. We have the CA in light green, we have the CCA in dark green, we have the CHA in light blue, we have the, uh, the virgin lime, agri agricultural virgin lime in dark blue, and the in black we have the PRCA. So when we analyze the flotation tails and we compare them to the others, we notice that they have a power of neutralization of 132. That was a percent that was higher than all of the values stipulated or set forth by the normative, normative instruct. But when we analyze the CAO and MGO addition, the flotation tails, they presented the CAO and MGO of 39% uh, of the, the 63.9 percent analyzing this specific parameter the tails could not be used as uh, agricultural virgin lime. And now uh, analyzing the total uh, neutralization, the flotation tails, they went above all of the other values uh, calculated by the normative using as an acidity correct. Now, talking a little bit about the normative instruction number 27 that discusses the elements of uh, heavy metals. Here on the left, we have a graph with the cadmium values that are allowed and the maximum for lead. Here we have the comparative between the flotation tails and what the legislation requires as maximum values. As we can see for cadmium, the value that we found was 2 milligrams per kilo in the flotation tails. The legislation allows maximum 20. And for lead, our maximum value found was 10 milligrams per kilo, whereas the legislation says as accepts up to 1,000 milligrams per kilo. So these tailings uh, followed uh, or complied with all the determinations of legislation 27. So what did this study show? The flotation tails has potential to be used as an acidity corrector when we take into account all the aspects from legislations 27 and 35. As for the granulometry, it will need no processing because it is in line with the physical attributes established. And the values of PN, PNRT, and the addition of CAO and MGO, it has reached the specifications, minimum specifications for um, for agricultural lime, calcinated agricultural lime, and hydrated lime, agricultural lime. And for both cadmium and plumbum or lead, it reached the maximum values stipulated by the legislations. These are the references that I used for doing this study. I would like to thank, first of all, CTSNI, which is the company that I am connected to uh, by the, for the possibility of coming to this conference. The team of Senai Innovation and Mineral Process, I would like to thank them for helping us with the tests. And lump in a, I would like to thank also Professor Andre and Professor Elenisi for holding such an important event. Thank you. Thank you, Luis. Thank you for your, your work.